Honorable City Council Member Jumani Williams. Jumani represents, uh, yeah, absolutely, round of applause. Uh, Jumani represents Central Brooklyn, correct? Or? Depends who you ask. All right, well, get, what, what, which, what are your, what's your district? Which neighborhood is your district? I represent the 45th district, uh, Flatbush, East Flatbush, Midwood, and um, a little slice of Canarsie, Flatlands as well. There you go. Um, so Jumani is the, uh, the chair of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, so um, given that we've, you know, affordable housing has been kind of the hot topic tonight, I wanted to just kick off our, our discussion uh, w with that a little bit. So, um, you know, we've heard the, the kind of the broad strokes of the mayor's plan for uh, creating affordable housing, and, um, you know, we're obviously very anxious to hear more details. But I'm curious to hear from you, as a longtime housing advocate, um, as the chair of this committee, what, what about the mayor's plan um, most excited you? What about the mayor's plan did you perhaps you know, take issue with? Or you know, would you like to see uh, maybe tweaked a little bit? Um, I'm curious to get your take. Uh, first, can I say, is Brooklyn in the house? So everybody say, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I had a microphone. I'm in Brooklyn. I had to do that. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, don't, I don't hate it. I love it. Um, so one, I'm excited that the mayor did a plan uh, to begin with. Um, and um, I think it was ambitious. I do think we actually need more units than what was put in the plan. Mm -hmm. But it's a good thing to start. I'm excited from the beginning that he understood that pres preservation was a very important, almost more important than building, because we can't build our way out of the problem. But that was something that the former mayor took some time to learn. Um, I think we need a little bit more specifics on exactly how he's going to preserve it, where he's going to build, and the actual affordability that's going to happen. The question is always uh, affordable to who. And so I think it's going to be uh, a neighborhood by neighborhood um, project by project basis to see what happens because what's going to happen in one neighborhood is not the same in the other neighborhood. But I do think everybody's going to have to share in some of what we're trying to push forward. I want to make sure that we break up the pockets of poverty uh, that we have in Brooklyn and we spread around and mix up the income uh, within all of the neighborhoods so that everybody gets the benefit from the new brand of Brooklyn that was being talked about. Now, um, I want to talk about public safety a little bit. I know uh, you've been you, you know, very vocal about some of the things that have been going on with the NYPD, um, especially around the very tragic incident that happened with, uh, with, with Eric Garner leading to his death. Um, you've started the uh, uh, national network, right, against the kind of combating uh, gun violence. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that and then also kind of get your, uh, I wanted to get your take on how um, some of the, um, you know, kind of, I guess, you know, the, a, lot of, a lot has been made about broken windows policing. Um, have you seen kind of this, this theory in action in your district and is it having a positive or negative effect? So it's a national network to combat gun violence where we put together, um, just speaking with other council members across the country, I also am proud to co-chair the task force to end gun violence. Um, it's, the, the problem with, we keep trying to find uh, problems with particular police theories, and then we find problems with particular commissioners, and the issue is actually much broader than that. And, any kind of policing that you do, that you overlay without dealing with the crux of the problem is going to be a problem. So as I said with stop, question, and frisk, I never had a problem with stop, question, and frisk. I had a problem with the way it was being applied. Um, the broken windows theory, uh, my, my family is Caribbean. My mother always said take care of the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves. So I understand that theory. Uh, the application of some of the broken windows theory is absolutely something that we need to uh, question and, and deal with. But above all those things is a problem with the way NYPD uh, polices certain communities, particularly low income communities, particularly black and brown. And if we don't deal with that, um, we can call for whatever commissioner we want. We can call for changes of police theories uh, all that we want. But if you overlay that, with uh, a problem that hasn't been fixed and has existed, you're gonna have problems. And so that's what's happening here. Um, also, I wanna make sure that we're not doing things in 2014 
with a 1994 state of mind. So we have to make sure that we correct that as well. But the essence of what broken windows theory is, I don't think people can necessarily agree with. But I don't know that it's being applied in a way uh, that helps us further issues that comes with black and brown communities. And then the other problem is, I don't know what to tell young black and brown, particularly uh, young men and women, where the unemployment rate is more than double the, uh, the nation, um, who can't find jobs, and the social service network is being cut, and then they have the ability to dance. The only place they can do it is in a, in a subway, and now we're gonna crack down there. So uh, we have to find a way to balance this. And again, my biggest thing is, in dealing with public safety, it's unfair to put the burden only on law enforcement. So I'm happy that uh, Commissioner Branton and the mayor are telling us what the law enforcement agency is going to do. But I want to hear what the other agencies are going to do. What is DYCD going to do? Uh, what is Department of Mental Health going to do? Uh, what are all of the agencies going to do to forward public safety? Because if those agencies put out the same kind of effort, then the burden wouldn't have to be on law enforcement. For some reason, in those communities, the only thing we do is throw law enforcement if we do anything. So it's a bigger conversation. And I think we get um, myopic in a way that's not helpful if we keep just saying, well, this one police thing is not working, this one theory. This commissioner is not this. Like, we have to broaden up and open up because the whole thing is problematic. And when we focus in like that, it's not, I don't think it's really helpful to discussion because we fix that and then we got to move on. We're gonna, how many police commissions have we had? How many different types of uh, policing have we discussed? Even uh, community policing, which we should actually define a little bit more, but I know what people are thinking. They were the same problems when we were having what people considered uh, community policing, when people had to beat cop. Uh, so it's a deeper issue that we have to talk about, and particularly how we deal with the gun violence. I'm very happy that we have a receptive uh, administration and even a commissioner that's willing to receive what many of us are saying and I think willing to work on it but it is a problem it starts with identifying the problem uh, I heard the mayor do that a little bit in the last press conference uh, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that and hopefully we can move forward now as it pertains to your district I'm curious to hear about some of the issues that you've heard on the grounds that um, that you really are trying to shine a light on um, whether it be you know housing and public safety like we've talked about or um, you know anything anything else that, that you wanted to touch on but in, in most of the issues that I have um, that people uh, think of me as talking about uh, are issues that have affected my in my district whether it's gun violence, mm -hmm. Uh, but where there's issues with better policing. And by the way, our police risk their life every single day to help keep us safe. We have to keep that in mind as we go forward with this discussion, whether it's the inequalities uh, in housing and not being able to find uh, adequate and safe and affordable income-targeted housing, whether it's the foreclosure rate uh, that's coming. I think you're about to get a cue here. I've been talking for too long. Um, whether it's uh, social justice issues to begin with, all of those things uh, affect my district. And so I try to, I realize that a lot of these issues were not district specific. They were actually broader across the city and even further. And in order to fix them, I had to bring in other folks. I had to make it shine a brighter light. So I'm gonna to continue to try to do that. But the 45th district is a great place to live. Uh, I have um, Orthodox Jews on one end and I have people just coming from Grenada, my island, with my family from on the other. It's a great mix. We have a million dollar Victorian homes and we have people uh, who are struggling at the same time. So I think if you go to the 45th district, you'll see the cross section of what we consider Brooklyn and New York City. Now, on the lighter side, I'm going to put you on the spot for a moment, but I, I was at the, uh, at the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival a couple weeks ago, and I actually spotted you as I was coming out. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, um, I know you're a fan of hip hop, I know you're a fan of music um, and the arts. Um, what about that scene is exciting you right now, specifically in Brooklyn? I think I'm excited that I think there are some people in hip hop who are really trying to bring it back to uh, what I think is more of the roots of it. But um, I'm excited because I think there are some hip hop artists that are not just talking about shootings, that are not just talking about glorifying sex, misogyny and those things. Uh, and so I'm happy about that. And a lot of those uh, artists are, are from Brooklyn or are locally up and coming. I think people recognize, yes, uh, the Bronx birthed hip hop 
uh, but Brooklyn raised it, and so this is the place that you want to come. Uh, yeah, we can get a round of applause for Brooklyn raising hip hop. But it's, it's hard because you have to, these, this is funded by money, and so when you go to the lowest common denominator, it's going to sell, but we have to try to balance that out. You know, back when I, when I the, 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 the golden era of hip hop in the 90s, you know, you can turn on the radio and hear NWA and also hear De La Soul. There was a great mix of music. Right now that mix is missing, mm -hmm. and I think there are some people trying to pull it back from Brooklyn and from other places. I love what J. Cole is doing. Uh, Wale, I love what he's doing in, in a lot of these. And I think people are trying to bring it back, and I, I'm excited about the direction we're going. Common just dropped a new album, so you probably want to cop that also. Jumani Williams, council member for the 45th Thank district. You. Thank you for joining us on our live stream today. Go New York Knicks. Yes.